Okay, welcome back to uh, <coughs> our presentation on latest trends on robotics and industrial automation. Focus on collaborative industrial robots, which are also called cobots. My name is Naman Khan Yunus. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Services Syndicate Private Limited Company in Lahore, Pakistan. I will continue from slide number 32, where we left off after the first uh, video. Okay, industrial collaborative rewards and industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is the fourth industrial revolution. The term fourth industrial revolution is commonly understood to mean a range of manufacturing technology that fuse the physical and digital worlds. With breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, robotics, the Internet of Things, autonomous vehicles, 3D printing, uh, unlike industry 4.0, which applies more strictly to industrial production, which, uh, the term force industrial revolution also, also covers the impact of technological changes on civil society, government structure and human identity. Industry 4.0 is combining cyber physical systems, the Internet of Things and cloud computing, noting that the result is often referred to as smart factory. The picture are self-explanatory. The first industrial revolution included mechanization, water power and steam power. The second industrial revolution was the mass production and assembly line and electricity. The third one included the computer and uh, automation, industrial automation included in the instrumentation, etc. And the fourth one points towards the cyber physical systems where the uh, uh, automation equipment of the factories or the process plants uh, communicate with each other and uh, start taking some of those decisions which were previously being done by or taken by human beings. Uh, to further automate the factory or process uh, plant processes. If you look at industrial automation, industrial, industrial collaborative robots, and industry 4.0, the chart uh, made by Unicer Robots. At Unicer Robots, we think industry 4.0 mainly as an internet applied to the manufacturing. The timeline of cobot history, mainly made by the uh, company called UR, lists that in 1920, the term robot coined by Czech sci-fi writer Karl Kefek uh, uh, was the first time the word robot was used or it can be recalled as the word robot was used. Moving towards 1954 to 59, George Dewell invents the industrial robot, partners with Joseph Engelberger to launch the Unimate with the first installation at General Motors uh, automotive manufacturer in USA. From 1960 to 2000, the caged industrial robots become widespread in the automotive and other industry. From the year 2001 to 2005, researchers at the University of Southern Denmark envision a new type of robot that better meets the market needs. 2005, Universal Robots was founded by University of Southern Denmark researchers Aston Ostergaard and Christian Carso and Casper's State. In 2008, Universal Robots launched the first uh, cobot, their first cobot, which was UR5, a 5 kg payload cobot, which was the world's first commercially successful collaborative robot. So, Universal Robots is, uh, can be considered the, uh, one, one of the main pioneers in the field of collaborative industrial robots or cobots. In 2012, Universal Robot launches the UR10 10 kg payload uh, cobot featuring a longer reach and greater payload capacity. 2012 to 2016, collaborative robots recognized as viable new class of industrial robot producers, KUKA, ABB, and Farouk, and startups such as Rethink enter the segment. In 2015, Universal Robot launches the UR3 3 kg payload cobot, the world's first tabletop collaborative robot <coughs> and 2016 ISO International Standard Organization publishes, publishes the long awaited ISO TS15066 specification with guidelines of ensuring worker safety in collaborative robotic environment. This is a major breakthrough, a major, a major uh, development that uh, uh, after 2016 and by 2020, there are many different standards which are now applicable to collaborative robots which are uh, to be utilized by the manufacturer or the integrator to enhance or 
I mean, uh, make sure that the collaborative robots are designed and deployed in the safest manner possible to avoid any harm to human or any other equipment. In the video for Industry 4.0, actually I have two videos on YouTube, uh, but I will rather uh, invite the user to view these videos if they want uh, to get a, get a brief introduction. Uh, let's play this one video. Many areas, simulation, autonomous system, cloud computing, editor manufacturing by 3D or 4D printer, augmented reality, big data, cyber security. Also, points to some of the important topics or the basic topics of industry 4.0. I will link it to the reader or viewer. Okay, let's move to uh, a topic uh, that is uh, something we have, uh, we as a company, uh, comp services syndicate as a company working in the field of industry robotics has to share with uh, our audience. Which is special to us that how do we come across, uh, how do we uh, come about uh, starting from an idea to a final uh, finalized uh, solution for uh, an end user wanting to deploy robotic automation or cobot based automation? First off, uh, we have some input uh, or some inputs. For example, uh, one of our customer was using a Jinsung interfolder machine from Taiwan or Korea and we have some initial documentation uh, describing the working of that machine. Uh, in other cases, it could be the uh, possible that there is uh, the machine, uh, we don't need to dive deeper into the machine, just need to know what uh, some parameters about that machine like how, at what speed it is. Uh, uh, producing the objects per minute or cycle, we need to see the cycle time to our, that our uh, robot or cobot has to achieve. Uh, there could be many other specifications which would uh, which, which should be uh, uh, vary from one application to another application. But eventually we have to make a user requirement specification or URS for short and get that approved from the customer because uh, this uh, all the following uh, activities will depend on the uh, approval of this document and the buy-in of the customer that okay I agree with these uh, specifications. Some of the specifications will come, will come directly from the customer, some of them will come in a way that we ask them a question and they uh, reply to our query or some of the uh, these specifications will be uh, derived in a way that we either make a video of the manual operation and then uh, extract those information. Once uh, we have all the input we need, we move to the process, uh, we review the documents of the package uh, and any computer edit uh, design drawing, we make a visit to the customer facility and collect videos, photos and dimension or other uh, important data or uh, parameters. Then we do our research and development. We talk to our vendors for robot selection, uh, for end effector selection. End effector means uh, a tool that has to be attached to the end of the robot. So it could be a gripping mechanism or a spray gun for paint or a welding torch for welding and so on and so forth. Similarly, some uh, vision system might be required that uh, may need to be, may need to uh, enable the robot to 
and be properly guided uh, over properly guided stool or there could be sensors that might be required for example sensing devices to detect if an object has reached a uh, designated position. Uh, similarly, uh, we will need some verification from the experts worldwide uh, all over uh, contacts from different uh, uh, different sectors, it could be robot manufacturer, they could be end effector manufacturer, they could be business system company or you know, sensor manufacturer. So we will need some sort of uh, buy-in from them that they should approve that okay this equipment can do this job. Then uh, we have our uh, highly trained staff that have already attended the online pre-trainings from our principles like you know, robots and robotic and other vendors and also we have attended the hands-on training from uh, our principal uh, head office uh, in Singapore or elsewhere and we keep on uh, updating ourselves by reviewing uh, webinars or ebooks and other uh, technical literature. So the final output would be uh, finalized CAD drawings uh, 3D animation or simulation of the whole process, a complete proposal that uh, lists uh, or documents all over working and then uh, and the technical and the commercial part of the proposal and uh, then we uh, keep on following up on the customer to uh, win the project and then uh, execute it to perfection. In the past when we were looking for some uh, to partner with some company or use their product in you know, one, one of our projects that we were uh, trying to automate using a robot, we came across many companies and we already had some experience with Stobly. Uh, we looked to ABB, Kuka, Nachi, Panu, Kawasaki, everything and also Universal Robots. Uh, but we chose Universal Robot because uh, one of the reasons was that uh, very uh, they are uh, very uh, user customer friendly uh, uh, organization and very good communication uh, and uh, very good professional relationship developed very quickly with them. Uh, one of the good qualities is that uh, uh, they always uh, communicate to us in a timely manner and uh, we get uh, good technical support from them. While looking for some end effector companies uh, to choose our first uh, uh, end effector for training or demonstration purposes. Although there is no one company in the world that can cater for all the different types of end effectors required, required for all the different types of application or robotic application, but we wanted to choose the company that was the most uh, user friendly. Uh, so, uh, Robotique was the obvious choice because Robotique is also a, a partner of Universal Robots and it uh, offers the uh, industry's best uh, compatibility with not only Universal Robots products but also uh, all the top uh, leading brands for industrial robots. And there are other major brands like Destaco, IAI, Zimmer, PhD, SMC, on Robot, Norgan, and Impact and we have uh, a know-how about their products and we have been quoting their products in our uh, project proposals to prospective customers. When looking for vision system companies, again robotic became the obvious choice because uh, it offers the most easy to integrate vision system and easy to use the vision system for universal robots uh, and also cost effective. There are other companies that offer uh, other types of vision system with varying features uh, for micro scan, SICK, Panasonic, Picket, Cognex being the leading one, National Instruments, Scans, Allied Vision, and so on. So, coming back to the robotic company selected, uh, uh, when at a time when we selected this company, they only had three products UR3, 3 kg payload, UR5, 5, 5 kg payload, and UR10, 10, 10 kg payload. And this was called CB series, C for CAD, B for BAT. And the robot system is comprised of, or the universal robot, robot product is comprised of one six axis robot, 
one control box and one teach magnet. The robot can be used in a single robot configuration like this or a dual robot configuration like this. And the uh, robotic accessories company selected uh, uh, had also uh, <coughs> a lower number of products. Coming back to Unisa robot, uh, in 2018 they launched uh, uh, their new series, E series. Uh, so they have now a total of seven robots. Four of them are in the E series, and three of the E series are. Direct, directly descendants from UR3, uh, there is a UR3 E series, UR5 we have a UR5 E series, and UR10 we have a UR10 E series. And the fourth one is UR16 E series, that is the 16 kg payload E series robot from Unicef Robot. So, by now, uh, Unicef Robot sells uh, seven cobots to offer. So looking at the robotic accessories company, uh, they had uh, at the start when we worked, uh, started working with them, they had uh, three grippers, 2F85, 2 finger 85 millimeter and 2F140, 140 millimeter and three finger grippers and two volt stock sensors and one uh, vision system. Uh, they now have one more uh, gripping system called Handy, Hand E and one more uh, they have uh, few more products which can be accessed from the website. So let's look at the introductory video from Unicef Robot that uh, shed light at some of the uh, important uh, or some of the uh, key areas of application. I would not, uh, would you play, uh, not play the whole video, I'll just focus on some of the key uh, uh, application areas. User can view the full video at this YouTube link. to the E series. What we're launching here at Automatic is our new generation of robots. We call it the E series. We've done a lot of improvements on the E series. We've really lifted the bar for what a collaborative robot is fine collaborative as a combination of several things. So we have created a new industry with our collaborative robots. We have made the robots more fast to set up, more easy to program, more flexible to deploy, they can go to more applications and we have increased the safety functions in the robots. We've got probably the we have that most experience about what collaborative robots are, and the ability to take that technology and make it simple is the real driver behind the potential of what we have achieved so far. The Universal Robots Plus is actually a platform. That is a system of developers that we're actually on the one side helping to innovate, on the other side it's helping us to innovate. So it's a win-win. You know, relationship, which I think is powerful and it's global. So, 
them can view the rest of the video uh, at their own disposal. Here is some historical uh, points about DNC robots. Uh, I'll just focus on the critical one. In 2018, the CTO of DNC robots was been awarded the Automation Industry's most prestigious award, the Engelberger Robotics Award in 2018 for the E series that they announced. They were and I've received many awards in the past. So these are the key statistics for okay. By 2017 they had uh, uh, sold more than 18,000 robots, but by 2020 they have sold more than 40,000 or 41,000 robots. Here's more some of the awards that they received over the past years. The latest one uh, being the Again, the Frost and Swilly One Manufacturer Leadership Council Award. So, what are the principal benefits? Your robots require only electrical power to operate, they are simple to program, easy to install, it's, uh, flexible in deployment, adjustable safety functions, safety guarding is not required based on the results of our assessment. Uh, fast payback period. Uh, the fastest, uh, one of the fastest they have achieved is uh, about eight months. This is from uh, highly advanced, uh, highly advanced economies like in Europe or <coughs> America. Uh, the lifetime award is uh, more than about twelve years. So highly efficient, uh, TUF approved, and work with lots of humans. Uh, TUF is an organization that. Uh, uh, certifies uh, control system or even robotic or factory automation equipment to uh, uh, for safety related application and speed uh, I'll just uh, focus on the tool speed that uh, 1 meter per second or 39.4 inch per second speed is achievable. The more benefits it's compatible with uh, most major brands of end on tools and other equipment. Uh, power consumption is very low. Typical program consumes uh, 350 watts for uh, robotic portion. Ingress protection IP classification is IP54 mainly. Uh, Ethernet is available, input output signals are available, digital input, digital output, analog input, and analog output. Uh, and some uh, input output signal at the tool side also available. The calculated operating life is 35,000 year, 35,000 35, hours. And the every playback period for uh, low, low income countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh could be uh, reached 3 or more years for the whole, uh, for the whole uh, robotic project. In this uh, video, we will just give the, the viewer an idea about how to set up uh, Cobot. So you basically need a stand. This this stand uh, is a portable stand. So if you want to deploy uh, the robot uh, in a manufacturing environment, you will need a different sort of stand that would be bolted to the ground. And the height or uh, height of the stand will have to be designed as per the application requirement. So basically, you need uh, to uh, plug in the. You need. You need uh, a stand to mount the. Uh, Cobot, for example, this is the UR5 Cobot, and you need a stand to mount the control box. The teach pendant is already mounted on the control box. It can be taken uh, away from the control box and then mounted back again. So uh, the same thing you can do on a uh, on a table. You can also mount uh, the uh, uh, robot on a table or also place the control box on a table. But it, the better uh, way to do is uh, to mount, mount the robot on a stand so that it can move above and below the uh, zero point or the center of the base of the robot. If you mount the robot on a 
table it won't be able to go below the uh, base and if, uh, if you move it try to move it below try to, uh, below the base it will hit the table so once you're done with mounting the robot and the control box we have to apply the power cable connect to the wall socket it is preferred that you uh, the, you, the power you apply to the robot is coming from a UPS, uninterruptible power source, uh, because it is generally not recommended that the robot could become to a sudden halt while performing some operation. It is, uh, it's, it is, uh, <coughs> we recommend that we should use uh, UPS with the robot. Take some time to boot up, and then you can. Uh, Start the robot, then start moving the robot, initialize the robot, and then you can go to the programming environment, touch the environment, make some waypoints, and then set them by either using the controls or uh, by, by hand teaching using the teach button. And once the waypoints have been taught, uh, you can play back the program. So this is uh, just to explain that, uh, just to start off, how simple it is to start off. So it just takes about 30 minutes to uh, start your first application on Unisil Robot Cobox. Now coming to the some important topics, Unisil Robot application in Pakistan. Palletizing and material handling uh, has been the most common. Multinational companies in Pakistan have already deployed palletizing robots in Pakistan in Nestle and the other multinational companies like Unilever have selected foreign engineering firms to go on to deploy cobots for palletizing, pick and play, and material handling and other applications. Coca-Cola, Pepsi Cola and PNG and other de defense automotive industry also use robots. <coughs> uh, here is a video for collaborative robots. Collaborative robot doing some palletizing in Nordschuder's uh, company in Norway. So this application has been is being uh, automated using cobots in Pakistan as well. So in Unilever, so they are trying to automate their uh, palletizing lines or conveyor automation uh, using palletizing robots. Where do we need the palletizing? We need palletizing when we have some boxes coming up, moving on a donkey or a wheelbarrow, and we have two pallets like this, and on the side, and the robot is picking up the boxes and making different patterns on the palletizing pallet. And usually, a pneumatic suction cup paper is required. Multiple box sizes and palletizing pattern is possible and the operator can either select the type of boxes and the pattern from the, from the dish pendant or an uh, additional human machine interface uh, panel can be attached to select the type of uh, boxes and the palletizing pattern and send to the robot over the communication interface. Okay, uh, an important uh, aspect of collaborative robots or collaborative environment sharing with people is that in this video that the human operator is standing on the pallet and is within the reach of the uh, robot uh, or well within inside the workspace of the robot and uh, there will be a collision now between the cobot and the human operator. If this robot was just uh, any other regular industrial robot the collision uh, could have been more severe and robot would not have known would not have known uh, if the collision uh, has taken place but here the story is different you see here that uh, as soon as the collision takes place the robot stops
अगेन यूनिवर्सल रोबोट्स एप्लीकेशन पाकिस्तान इन इंडस मोटर कंपनी जोटा कराची द एप्लीकेशन इज कॉल्ड फॉर्म इन प्लेस गैस्ट्रिक डिस्पेंसिंग तो मल्टीनेशनल कंपनी इन पाकिस्तान ऑलरेडी डिप्लॉयड स्टार्टेड डिप्लॉइंग कोबोट्स दिस इन दिस एप्लीकेशन वी हैव मेटल फ्रेम एंड रोबोट इज हैविंग डिस्पेंसिंग गन इंस्टॉल्ड विच इज गोइंग टू डिस्पेंस अ गैस्ट्रिक ओवर अ डिफरेंट डिजाइन ऑफ मेटेलिक पीस So this application is deployed in Toyota, Karachi, Pakistan. In their engine shop, they have three different cobots, and each cobot uh, is designed to uh, deploy this gas jet in two different designs of metallic frames. So th these are, these robots have been working in Pakistan for more than one year without uh, any trouble, and we went to see this application in their plant and the working point. okay um uh, other projects which are uh, currently being uh, foreseen in pakistan for robotic application is this wind screen adhesive application video is from a plant in bmw uh, but the same thing uh, uh, our customers like toyota are trying to achieve in pakistan so this application uh, again a specific uh, and upon tool is used which uh, can be enabled or disabled to start deploying the adhesive on the uh, wind shield as per the pattern decided okay this is one application that we have developed in number one office which is the water dispenser application which involves a uh, robotic two finger 85 mm gripper and robotic uh, risk camera or vision system so we have here a uh, kid who is placing a uh, glass on a yellow uh, mat uh, so the the camera will detect the glass position and camera has been taught to detect a glass which is an irregular shape and then send the coordinates to the controller so that the controller can move the robot tool in such a way so that it can grip the glass and close the grip and then move the the glass to a water dispenser water dispenser place the glass on the required position close the grip again and then press the button to uh, start filling the some some water so we are taking multiple functions from the gripper we can uh, we are not only just taking picking and placing the glass but we are also pressing buttons uh, from the gripper uh, by using the gripper so uh, this robotic application has just uh, pick place and move and finally brought out a glass of water for the kid to take up uh, as you note previously the glass was placed in about the center of the yellow sheet now it is placed in the right side so the position of the glass has changed in the next video we will show that the position of glass has changed and now the robot will go back to the home position and again uh, using its flash uh, camera flash it will try to find out the position of the glass and then command the robot to uh, pick up the glass from the new position so there is some intelligence uh, involved in this uh, application the same uh, procedure will be formed some of the waypoints are same for this application but the only those waypoints which involved picking up the glass have been recalculated by the robot control system by using the coordinates received from the vision system again the robot is uh, now serving the glass of water to the rice kid over here